Today's discussion revolves more around where the guidelines for cholesterol management come from, and it's what we call the ATP or NCEP guidelines, and how to interpret those guidelines. So the question is, where does the data come from, and which patients do we put on drugs, and what drugs and how aggressively do we manage patients' cholesterol? I hear all the times the guidelines say you have to get everybody under 70, which is LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. 70 may be a good number, 70 may, may not be a good number, and the question is where did this originate from and why do the guidelines state it? But one thing to remember about guidelines, guidelines are guidelines. Guidelines aren't data or a study that specifies this drug is proven to be better than another drug or than placebo in a specific patient population. Guidelines are a body of experts or people that have practiced medicine in the specific field of medicine for a period of time who get together virtually or in a room and decide what do we want to recommend that the majority of physicians should follow. So guidelines aren't applicable to every individual patient because there's not data for every individual patient within the guideline. Guidelines also are not always evidence-based and some of the guidelines that we have in cardiology or other fields of medicine are more based on expert opinion and not based on outcomes data. What I'm trying to sort out is where do we have outcomes data and how can we apply that outcomes data to patients and then when does that correlate with what the guidelines state. This whole concept of getting your LDL to under 70 originated many years ago from a trial called Prove It. And Prove It was a study that was randomized to do high dose of one drug called atorvastatin versus low dose of another drug called pravastatin. And the theory at that point in time, it was actually paid for by the company that produced pravastatin at the time. The theory was that pravastatin had very good outcomes data and still has very good outcomes data at lowering stroke, heart attack, risk of dying, peripheral vascular disease. Pretty much every parameter that was looked at was better in every study that was done with pravastatin. And the company wanted to prove that the drug had other effects outside of its effect on LDL. And at that point, the torvastatin, which is much better at lowering LDL than pravastatin is. Torvastatin was being marketed as the drug that lowers LDL more, so it's a better agent. The company that said, we make pravastatin, and we want to prove that we can lower LDL less and improve outcomes more, that's what created this trial called Prove It. And unfortunately, it didn't work. So prove it showed that the group that got the higher dose of atorvastatin, those patients had better outcomes than the patients got low to medium dose of pravastatin. So after that trial was published, many people said it's better to lower LDL more and getting LDLs under 70 is proven to be better than having a higher LDL. Well, that's not exactly true because the trial didn't say, let's take people at a certain LDL and let's take our previous goal, if you want to put it that of 100, and get people down to 70 and leave half the group at 100 and lower the other half to 70 and then see if people get better. After Prova came out, there was a trial called TNT or Treat a New Target, which was just with atorvastatins. Patients were on 20 milligrams of atorvastatin and their average LDL was close to a previous goal of 100. Half of those people got randomized to stay in the 20 milligrams of atorvastatin. The other half got randomized to go up to 80 milligrams of atorvastatin. The trial was designed to finish over a five-year period, but at five years, there weren't any outcomes that were better in the 80 milligram, ver 80 milligram group versus the 20 milligram group. After several more years, the trial kept going on, in the lump sum of events. So they didn't just say, well, is heart attack risk lower? Is stroke risk lower? They lumped a whole bunch of events together. And if you look at the trial, they call it MACE, or Major Adverse Cardiac Events. And after many, many years, the lump sum of events was slightly lower in the group that got 80 milligrams versus the group that got 20 milligrams. Well, the downside of that, if you look at the trial, there were actually more people that died in the trial that got 80 milligrams versus 20 milligrams. So if you were one of the patients at the beginning of the trial and said, was I more likely to be alive if I stayed on the 20 milligram dose versus the 80 milligram dose? Yes, you're actually more likely to be alive if you did not go up to 80 milligrams, although there were fewer events in the 80 milligram group. A similar trial was done with a different drug called simvastatin. And that trial was called A, the letter A to Z, 
in A to Z randomized people from 20 milligrams to 80 milligrams of atorvid or simvastatin and look to see if that improved outcomes, if it improved mortality. And the downside of A to Z is the risk of side effects went up so much in the 80 milligram group, the FDA took the 80 milligram dose of simvastatin off the market. So those people once again started with LDLs close to our previous guideline goal of 100 in our current recommended goal, which is optional in patients with significant coronary disease and going up to 80 milligrams versus leaving people alone at 20 milligrams so that it actually caused more harm than good to the point that the FDA had to take that dose off the market. There are a few newer drugs that you see advertised on TV now called PCSK9s. And PCSK9s is a different molecule. It's an injection. You give it to yourself every two weeks or every four weeks. It's not a pill that you take. But those drugs work by a different mechanism than statins do. In these drugs, each drug, one is called Repatha, the other is called Praliwin. Each of those drugs have one large study looking at outcomes. So they did a trial to say, if we put people on this drug, do we lower events and do we lower mortality? Praliwent is one of the drugs in the trial's name was Odyssey. Odyssey lowered the risk of events and it lowered mortality slightly. Your risk of mortality went down a few percentage points. The other drug is called Repatha, and Repatha's trial is called Fourier. Fourier also lowered events, but if you took the drug, your risk of dying, once again, was slightly higher, just like what we saw in TNT with atorvastatin. Your risk of dying if you took Repatha was slightly higher than if you didn't take Repatha in the first place. The total number of deaths in both Odyssey and Fourier, which are the PCSK9 trials, were low. So because the total number of deaths were so low, that doesn't prove that either, the, either of these drugs either reduces the risk of dying or increases the risk of dying. All I'm saying is this is what the data shows. And if you look at the trial and look at the total mortality as far as who's dead or who's alive, it's slightly lower with Praliwent, it's slightly higher with Repatha. And those things need to be thought of when you're considering, do I want to add an agent? If this is your mom or your dad, do you want to give them a drug if you don't have clear data that it's going to make them live longer or if there's data suggesting that they might die a little bit sooner. There's other non-statin drugs on the market. Zetia is the most common drug. Zetia has multiple trials that have looked at outcomes in different patient populations, from patients with aortic stenosis to patients with coronary disease. And many of the Zetia trials showed that it lowered LDL, but didn't have a great reduction in events. One of the trials did show a reduction in events, so Zetia is an option which may increase risk of liver problems or some other side effects, but doesn't have great overall data, both as far as lowering risk of dying or lowering risk of vascular events. The last question that patients ask me often is, well, what can I do with diet and exercise? I don't want to take a drug. I want to make this better with diet and exercise. And many patients are able to do that some patients that have a genetic abnormality where they're predisposed to a much higher cholesterol, even with diet and exercise, can't get their numbers controlled well enough and need to be on a drug. There's a separate video which I posted that talks about statins. Statins are the best drugs at lowering mortality for the most part. Other agents as far as dietary modifications and plant sterols can be helpful. I'll talk about this in a separate lecture when I talk about lifestyle in general, relating both to higher cholesterol and obesity. But I hope you found this lecture helpful. Please email me if you have questions. Hope you all have a good day.